Yeah, also the presidential candidate of the Labour Party uh, has said the leaked conversation with the founder and the general overseer of Living Faith Church, A.K. Winners Chapel, was doctored and completely taken out of context and distorted in a desperate attempt to rope him and have him prosecuted. Media aide to Peter B. Valentine, OBM, says that there has been a plot to search and review all of his calls in the last three years with a view to seeing if he mentioned interim government or anything that will make all progressive Congress prosecute him for treason and if they take, o if they take over. According to him, the badly distorted leak conversation with Bishop Oyedekbo is the latest antics in effort to nail his principle. In the audio that has since gone viral on social media, Obi was heard appealing to Oyedekbo to help mobilize Christian voters ahead of the election, especially those in the north central states of Kwara, Kogi, and Niger, declaring that the election was a religious war. Meanwhile, the Obidati Presidential Campaign Council has also dismissed the leaked audio, describing it as deep fake audio file aimed at promoting religious tension in the country. In a statement jointly issued by head Obidati Media, uh, Diron Ifadi, and the chief spokesperson of the Labour Party Presidential Campaign Council, Yunus Atanko, it's alleged that the APC was behind the leaked audio. So there are a couple of stories. Uh, Dr. Bate, I'm sure you want to jump on this then. Well, number one, <clears throat> the election is over. Well, apart from the uh, supplementary elections on April 15 in certain constituencies that have not yet been uh, uh, concluded. <clears throat> the post-election phase has occurred, has begun. Cases are in court. We have uh, over 100 cases already in the uh, various uh, uh, tribunals. There will probably be more. The judiciary has provided a list of judges that will be involved in this. What is important is that, look, Nigerians should learn not to continue to heat up the polity. The cases that are in court will be determined according to the law. And that is why we keep calling on the judiciary uh, to ensure that justice is done and that all parties concerned should respect the outcome of the ruling uh, by the various courts. There is a uh, room for appeal. What is disturbing is what happened, you know, uh, this uh, last weekend about allegations of a leaked uh, uh, audio of a private conversation between Mr. Peter Obi, presidential candidate of the Labour Party, and uh, Bishop uh, David Oyedepo of the uh, Living Faith, uh, uh, you know, church, uh, the Winners uh, Chapel. Well, you can't blame the Labour Party for saying that, look, it looks like there is an attempt to monitor all the conversations held on uh, Mr. Peter Obi's uh, phone in the last one year as an attempt to set him up uh, for one reason or the other. And specifically in one of the statements that was issued, the National Communications Commission uh, was mentioned in this regard. I think that the NCC, in order to lower tension in the country, we need to come out and say that, look, uh, this, is not, this is not true. Uh, it's also important to note that, you know, this could generate fear within the community uh, with people thinking their phone conversations uh, are no longer uh, safe. Because if you look at the content there, uh, the allegation is that, oh, Mr. Pitobi was using religion, was mobilizing on the basis of religion. Well, isn't it the case that almost every candidate tried to use whatever they have to their own advantage? After all, in the uh, All Progressive Congress, the issue was about Muslim-Muslim ticket. And the fact that, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the party was running and appealing to the Muslim uh, community. Okay, even if Mr. Pito B appealed to his own, uh, you know, Christian community, how is that an, an offense as long as, you know, no law has been violated in that regard? But what is even more important is that uh, Bishop Oyedepo has come forward, has issued a statement to say that he was not involved in any uh, partisan uh, politics and that he, he had no affiliation with any, you know, uh, political party. But as, uh, you know, um, a, a, a man of the cloth, as uh, a religious leader, it, it was, uh, you know, it was within his province, within his responsibility to pray for, you know, anybody that uh, approaches him. And in that uh, audio, if you listen to it very well, he kept saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you know. So, I mean, I don't see how that is a problem, because even if it was a Muslim, that had come to him, 
it will still give him hope, which is in line with Christian eschatology. It will still encourage uh, the person. So, but, you know, the election's over. I think we should just focus on the uh, judicial process and not heat up the polity in any way. All of that, uh, you know, back and forth between APC spokespersons, Labour Party uh, spokespersons. Look, these spokespersons, you'll find something else to do. The campaign is over. You know, we, earlier on we were talking about uh, inauguration, new government, and the cases in court. So if people still have some energy amongst them to cause, uh, uh, you know, a conflict, no. We do not want conflict in Nigeria. Elections should not be war. Everybody should know when to cut it off. And Mr. Pito B himself has said, look, in seeking uh, what he calls uh, the mandate, he will go through legal, <coughs> legal and constitutional process. And that's what is important, in my view. Right. A uh, couple of things. And like you said, rightly, a reaction to the message, because this went viral over the weekend. There were many reactions. The APC was, you know, fighting and saying, yes, this is it. Uh, pushing the religious agenda and all of that. The Labour Party reacted to it. There's been, I think, three reactions. The first reaction was from uh, Mr. Kenneth Okonkwo, you know, that said that was taken out of context. The second reaction was from uh, the Debo uh, uh, Onifade, uh, yeah, that, the Ron Onifade that talked about the fact that, yes, this was, you know, put together and all of that, doctor to suit a narrative. Then this reaction we have. So there's been different reactions as regards this. But a couple of questions we should ask. Number one, people's conversations being monitored, being taken, being put out there. There are laws of the land, and as you enshrined in the Constitution, Dr. Bati, you are the lawyer, correct me if I'm wrong, I think Section 37 of the Nigeria Constitution talks about right to privacy, if my memory serves me right. And the fact that people have a right to be able to make their private conversations. So, People taking those conversations. What well, does the Nigerian Communication Commission know about all of this? How did the access go to be able to take these conversations? Let's ask those questions. Also, the tape itself. We need to be able to subject it to empirical forensics. You know, forensic that is holistic, that talks about, you know, voice dis uh, distortion that talks about also possibilities of deep fakes and things like that. Although some media group has taken us through that and they saw that there were not too much deep fakes in it. But were the conversations distorted? What was the extent to which it was doctored? What was the bare raw file analysis of the conversation? These are questions we should ask. Leading up to the last election, there was a big talk about religion that was occasioned by the Muslim Muslim ticket of the APC. And since then, there was a lot of back and forth. Yes, it is not right for leaders to pitch along religious stands because, yes, every politician uses the sentiment of religion and ethnic bias. But the truth is, it doesn't make it right. For us to be able to build a country, we need to build a country of holistic competence and speak more about what our leaders can do for us and the capacity they have to be able to execute the things they have written in their manifesto. Because when you look, all of us that bicker about religion and bias and ethnic bias in politics, we forget that poverty does not know tribe. Poverty does not select and say, oh, you are an Hausa man. Because you are an Hausa man, I will not come your way. You are a Yoruba man. Because you are a Yoruba man or you are a Christian or a Muslim, I will not come your, come your way. Poverty is as a result of bad leadership. Darren Osamoglu wrote in his book, Why Nations Fail. He said nations fail because their leaders make them fail, pure and simple. The failure of Nigeria is a reflection of leadership. What is poverty? Lack. What causes lack? Unequitable distribution of resource. The clear analogy is some have food, they cannot eat. Some can eat but have no food. Some can eat but they have no food. But some have food. And that's the clear problem of poverty. So those are the things that bind all of us. Nigeria has become a country where the vast population is united in poverty. The bigger conversation, rather than the ethnic and the religious bickering, is the conversation about how we can remove poverty from our lives. Because it's actually empirically proven. You can bring people out of poverty 
when you do the right things as regards governance. So I think that's the bulk of the conversation. And going forward, we would like to talk to political surrogates and spokespersons. It is not time to overheat the polity. Because in all of this, we've also had very, very tough incendiary statements here and there. And all sorts of political spin going on. And the political spin will involve deep fakes. So when people started talking about deep fakes, I wasn't surprised because I remember on this same table on what's training, I told Oji that deep fakes will herald our political process. I was proven right. They will use all sorts of means to get an advantage. But the question is, does it take away the pain and suffering of what is happening to Nigerians? So those are the things we should look. We are all united one way or the other in poverty. We are all united in the effect of inflation, both rich and poor. Of his uh, telephone conversation between the uh, presidential candidate of the Labour Party and the, you know, uh, the father uh, in the Lord of the uh, Winners uh, Chapel, uh, Bishop David Oyedepo. One of the things that remains that will remain to be done will be, since the Labour Party, some spokespersons for the Labour Party insist that they know the persons who leaked. The, uh, the audio, right? The thing to do, if they know those persons, is in fact to commence legal action against them. Because it is your right to privacy of memos, of correspondence, of your house, of telephone conversation, is a fundamental right. Guaranteed not just in the uh, Constitution. Other laws, subsidiary laws, even the Child Rights Act, even uh, uh, Section 14 of the Freedom of Information Act of uh, of 2015, even, uh, you know, consumer protection uh, legislation, and even the guidelines on data protection and privacy in Nigeria, you know, protect you from your conversation from being leaked. The only circumstance in which your conversation can be, uh, you know, uh, made available, it will be under a legal proceeding, and there will be a, a proper application. But for somebody to just take your telephone conversation and be uh, distributing it all over the place, whether it is doctored or not, once the intent is to embarrass you and expose you to ridicule in the eyes of right-thinking members of society, then, of course, you can act. And I think that, you know, uh, Mr. Peter B should not shy away from, uh, you know, taking action against those persons who may have leaked the uh, conversation if he knows them. Because... One of his spokespersons has said, oh, maybe there's a conspiracy of the Nigerian Communications Commission in this regard. So that's why the matter should be investigated. Because if uh, telephone conversations are routinely leaked, you will blow up the country. Huh? There are some conversations you have on phone. It may not be something political or religious. There are certain uh, conversations that uh, everybody men have on phone that could, uh, that could cause crisis. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's why everybody double the <laughs> Ruben, you are, you are, you are very, that, you are very that, interested in this protection of this <laughs> right. <laughs> it's not slowly, but that's, no, how, but that's how it goes. That, that's how that's much of a threat yeah, yeah. it could become to society. Yeah. I mean, I mean, very well said, uh, Dr. Abati. And like I said before concerning this, I think a total forensic examination should be done uh, as regards, you know, the conversation and everything that happened. Like I said before, prior to this time, it's political season. You will have a lot of AI manipulated doctored materials and all of that. People will cut conversation to suit their purpose. And that's why I said in the forensic examination, there should be a check for voice distortions. You know, people would be able to cut and paste and things like that and all of that, like the allegation the Labour Party made. But the APC is saying otherwise that, oh, it's a reflection of who the person is, blah, 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 and all of that. But I think to a very large extent, the right to private conversations is enshrined in our constitution, section 37. And Obi is actually uh, accusing the APC yes, of and being he's behind the this. APC. And that's why at this point in time, we need you know, more investigators, forensic investigators, to be able to ascertain and like Dr. Sabat said, probably put a legal you know, uh, conversation as regards that. Because if people are not nipped in the bud, it will only continue. Yeah. And because there's a reason why it continues, because people say, oh, after the person apologizes and say, oh, yo, let's not blow this out of proportion. But 
it doesn't stop the fact that the person did do it and anybody that is in this case. But I don't know the full details of this case, so I cannot comment. And, you know, those proof, or those uh, claims by the Labour Party will only be asserted when they have an independent forensic, you know, examination report that is released and they point out all what happened, which can be done by forensic independent experts. Another story 